it is now time to look at the causes behind the rise of fascism now while tracing the story of fascism we have seen its origins its characteristics and its nature we also saw the background of its leader mussolini and our discussion and the story of fascism had now put us at the end of the first world war and the interwar period which italy had to now face now the causes behind the rise of fascism also pop up during this period so let us look at them one by one now taking a brief trip back to the first world war you must remember that italy had entered into an understanding with germany and austria hungary and that understanding was known as the triple alliance now italy had taken up the stance of neutrality which means that it was not willing to fight against the enemy powers and neither was it supposed to defend its own powers it was sitting in its place or it was being neutral but suddenly things changed as the course of war progressed did italy join the war on the side of its allies well not really italy switched its side altogether and joined the triple entente and it also happened to declare war on its own allies or the central powers so we see that italy changed the side during war and declared war on its own previous allies so this is because italy had joined the triple entente on the invitation of britain but why exactly did italy do this this is because england or britain happened to have promised italy better territorial and monetary gains if it joins the side of ottoman powers and if the ottoman powers win and therefore italy went into thought it realized that if it stays on the side of the central powers and continues being neutral it would not get much territorial gains and perhaps nothing monetarily and therefore it made the bold move of switching sides and the first thing it did was to attack or to declare war on its previous allies namely austria and germany now italy also abandoned the triple alliance for another reason this is because italy had a constant tick of having to fight alongside its previous rival austria hungary now austria hungary and italy were old time rivals germany had somehow managed to bring these two powers this conflicting powers into a triple alliance but italy could never really sit with this and therefore when it got a chance to abandon a triple alliance it took it so we see that when the war started italy was on the side of the triple alliance agreement alongside germany and austria hungary and italy was maintaining the stance of neutrality so when its own allies got involved in the war with the ottoman powers italy was staying put but this is when britain thought of approaching italy with a counter offer of joining the triple ottoman when italy considered the various promises which britain made and the benefit it might have italy made the bold move it decided to join the triple entente and not only that it also gave up its stance of neutrality and the first thing it did was to declare war on its previous ally austria hungary thus bringing italy into the fold of war Now can you answer this question which military alliance had Italy abandoned during the first world war was it the triple entente was it the balkan league was it the triple alliance or was it the european confederacy the correct answer is the triple alliance now if you remember the outcome of the first world war the ottoman powers or the allied powers happened to be victorious and italy had joined the allied powers or the ottoman powers and therefore it also emerged victorious now it was time for england to fulfill all the promises that it made to italy now the treaty of versailles was signed between the allied powers who were victorious and germany which had lost the war now we remember how the treaty of versailles was incredibly humiliating for germany the losing power this is because the treaty took too much from germany but italy happened to be on the victorious side and why are we studying dissatisfaction with the treaty of versailles is it not supposed to be happy or fulfilled with it 
Well, on the contrary, Italy happened to be dissatisfied with the treaty because the treaty did not give enough to Italy. So while Germany was dissatisfied because it took too much from Germany, Italy was dissatisfied because it did not give it enough. So we see that Italy participated along with the other allied powers at the Paris Peace Conference, out of which the Treaty of Versailles and the other peace settlements were the outcome. But the Treaty of Versailles and the end of the war only partly fulfilled the promises made to Italy by the Allies. All those elaborate promises made by Britain were only partly fulfilled. Let us see what this partial fulfillment was. So while the Treaty of Versailles and the other treaties which are part of the Paris Peace Settlement, we see that Italy was given control over the previous Austrian regions, namely Southern Tyrol, then you have Trentino, which is right over here, and the coastal region of Dalmatia. But this is not the only thing Italy had hoped for. So you see, Britain had also offered to give Italy more territories. So now you see, Italy had hoped for portions of the German and the Ottoman empires or the territories of these erstwhile empires. Italy was only given portions from the Austrian Empire, but it was not given any portion from the German Empire and the Ottoman Empire, both of which happened to have been disintegrated after the war and out of which the other allied nations had taken a significant part of. Italy wanted portions from these as well, but it did not receive such. Now this map is a good depiction of what Italy hoped for and what it received. So the expectation side of it is what Italy was promised by Britain to join the side of the Ottoman powers and if the Ottoman powers or the allied nations win the war, Italy would be given this region right over here, this region of the Ottoman territory and also this region from Germany, apart from of course these Austrian territories. But the reality was that Italy only received as we saw Dalmatia, then you saw Southern Tyrol and Trentino from Austria-Hungary. But it did not receive either German territory or Ottoman territory. And this led to Italy being incredibly dissatisfied. Now you see, Italy had lost about 7 million soldiers while fighting in the war. And the war which Italy fought was perhaps in one of the most difficult terrains of the entire conflict. Italy also did something which is considered to be the most boldest move in war, being a turncoat. It had shifted from its previous alliance and joined a new one, hoping for better gains. This also led to Italy's reputation as a political power significantly decreasing because after the war, no one could trust Italy. So not only did Italy lose a significant amount of its population, it also lost its political legitimacy. And in return for this, it only got a few scattered leftover territories and did not get the prized territories it had been promised. This led to the Italian public being discontented. And their discontentment raged in Italy. Now the public happened to blame this discontentment on the Italian government as to why did the government feel fit to even join the side of the Ottoman powers in the first place and why did Italy accept the promises made by Britain. So the Italian public were angry on the government because it was the government's decision to join the war against its previous allies. And this discontentment was led by leaders like Benito Mussolini. Now, if you remember, Mussolini joined the Italian army to fight in the First World War. This is because he felt that this war would be beneficial for both Italy and his own career. But the limited gains which Italy received at the end of the war made Mussolini discontented as well. And he led the public to focus their entire discontentment against the government which itself was crumbling. Now, the Italian public felt that the government itself is weak and is not far-sighted and they projected their expectations onto Mussolini, who promised to be a better leader and lead Italy to prosperity. This particular reason led to the rise of fascism. And we can see how the public, being discontented or dissatisfied with the Treaty of Versailles, 
and its own government for even accepting the treaty itself or having accepted the alliance with Britain, this particular dissatisfaction was encashed or monetized by Mussolini, who managed to convince the public that he would definitely be a better leader. Now, Italy also faced an extreme economic crisis after the First World War or the interwar period, as it might be called. Now, more than two million young soldiers had returned home after the First World War. And if you remember, they had won, right? So what was the grand welcome waiting for them? Was it a grand parade? Were they being felicitated? Well, the grand welcome waiting for them was unemployment. You see, they returned home and they had to face unemployment because the government was unable to provide them with jobs. This angered the people and the youth particularly. And this led the youth of Italy to join the ranks of the fascist party. Now, it was not only the people who did not have a job who were dissatisfied. Even laborers and peasants were dissatisfied because of the extreme working conditions and the low wages they received off land. Thus, the government, in a nutshell, was unable to handle the interwar or the post-war crisis which Italy had to face. And this made the people extremely aggravated. Now, this aggravation led to demonstrations. People consequently went on strikes and riots became very common in the country. The public of Italy now felt that they need a stronger government to lead them into a prosperous future. And the want for a stronger government itself became a reason for the rise of fascism, as we will see in the subsequent points. Now, apart from unemployment, Italy also faced other economic problems. See, Italy had taken a lot of loans during the First World War to fight the war, as war happens to be extremely expensive. Now, after the First World War, Italy was unable to pay these loans back and it had incurred a lot of national debt. Now, to make the debt lesser, Italy did something which almost all nations do when they are in debt. They decided to devalue their currency or to lower the value of the currency. So, if previously, one lira or one unit of Italian currency could buy, let's say, one piece of bread, now you would have to take 10 lira or 10 units of Italian currency to buy that same piece of bread. Now, devaluation done at a limited rate is normal, but the Italian government devalued the currency recklessly. And this led to the Italian currency's value drastically falling. And this led to inflationary conditions where everything became too expensive. This is because the Italian currency's value was falling, but the market demand or the demand for goods remained the same. Thus, products were still at the same rate while the money's value was falling. Now, imagine a condition where you have no job and the products are costing more than usual. This simply was too much for the Italian public to take and they further became discontented. And the Italian government's incapability to deal with inflation and unemployment led to total economic collapse. Now, this is again when Mussolini rose up as a leader and promised the people of Italy that he would give them a stronger currency and would also lead Italy towards prosperity. This led the people to support Mussolini and to give up its trust over the government of Italy which now existed. And that is something we will see in the next video. So in this video, we started off by tracing the various causes behind the rise of fascism in Italy. We are particularly focusing on the interwar period as this is when fascism as an ideology was accepted and also rose up in Italy while the leader of fascism, Mussolini, also happened to have his own career progression. So today we focused on the dissatisfaction with the Treaty of Versailles and how the Italian public felt that the Italian government was wrong in shifting sides during the war and therefore decided to support Mussolini in his rise to power. We also saw how the war, incredible as it was, led Italy to face incredible economic crisis. And this crisis made the Italian public agitated as they had no jobs and the price of goods was constantly rising. The government's incapability to deal with the crisis led to total economic collapse and made the people believe in Mussolini as the next viable leader to save Italy from its current condition. In the next video, we will be focusing on the other causes which led to the eventual rise of fascism and the establishment of a fascist government with Mussolini as its head. 
Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So add Delta Step. Learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.